Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I just wanted to record some real quick thoughts on Akida that I just thought about now. So the idea between the two camps. So there's one camp that is trying to, let's say the classical theist. And then the other camp is the open theist. Kind of open theist, okay? So the classical theist, they have a view of God where God is transcendent, okay? Transcendent of what? Mainly the qualities that we are tra- uh, attaching to God. So they will believe God transcend that. So they want to kind of affirm that God has qualities, but those qualities transcend the one we know anyway. But on the other side, the open tears or similar to them, they are seeing this as you're making God static. You're making God like he cannot do anything. God cannot do any actions. God cannot do this. God cannot do that. Because once you deny those things, this is what it leads to. Okay, this is what the other guys are saying. So, them, they are saying, but you see the tension. The tension is now this. Which kind of God uh, are these people trying to take? The open tears or people that are close to them. You see the open tears, they just came out and said it. They will say things like, God does not know. They will say things like, God cannot do something. They will say things like, they will put some kind of limitations because once you bring God back, into those languages and those qualities that we know from our experience limitations start to come okay now there are some of them that will back off from this they want to say we affirm these things for god so for instance god changing okay god being in time or god having space some people want to affirm this because they think if you remove space there's nothing left if you remove time nothing can be done so they will say we god can do or god is not spaceless Okay, and what they are trying to show is that they are bringing God back into our mind because from all our experiences, this is all we know. If you remove it, we don't see anything left. The other guys, them, they are saying, we need to remove all those qualities because God is beyond them. Now, this way, I need to bring them together. How? I see like those guys that are conservative, open tears, kind of, they will want to, if you ask them very carefully about the con- connotations of their uh, bringing God into time or something like this. That uh, oh, so you you mean that God has a past and those things? They will not want to engage in that talk. If you talk about God being in space and asking them how big is God, especially they will want they will not want to engage in that kind of talk because even them is repulsive to them. They every one of us we are trying to do what we are trying to affirm good qualities for God. That's what all of us we are trying to do. In the aim of doing that, we recognize first that the limitations of our language and the limitations of our experience. The classical tears, them they see this as, okay, fine. Since there's limitation in our language, our language cannot fully describe God. Since there's limitation in our, uh, what's it called? Uh, experience, our experience cannot cover God. So God is beyond anything that we can conceive of. And then they will use some kind of method to like how do we talk about god then so then they will just affirm whatever god said and what the the ontological meaning they will say god knows that okay they will tafweed okay assign it to god consign the meaning to god the other guys them they see this as so what does that mean they will say what does that mean it has no content all you have done is giving everything back to god you have nothing in your mind that you're thinking about per se so if God is removed from time and space, we have nothing in particular that we can look at. We have nothing that can happen because time is past, present, future. From our experience, we know what time is. From our experience, we know space. what space is. Then they won't say, the most conservative of them will say, God somehow does things. And we don't need to deny time because it is possible. They are living the possibility. And uh, they won't say, God is not spaceless completely because if it's spaceless completely, they, are, they cannot conceive of how do we see God then or things like that. But the, you remember the classical theists, they could make the same argument. They could say that God does these things. God can do things. But in a way that we don't know, transcendent. You see, in a way we, we will never understand. It's not the same way we do things. Do you see? Or God can... All those things that seem contradictory... They will say we don't know how, but God does it and he doesn't is not in time. So they will say, for instance, see this now. God timelessly created the world. 
If you want to break it down in our language, it will seem that God is actually in time. But if you take it in the sense that the classical teas want it, they will say, I affirm it that God created the world. I affirm it that God exists, but timelessly and spacelessly. Because they see imperfection in time and imperfection in space. In this kind of sense, they see some kind of problem with it. The other side will say, God is in time or God is in space, but it, it doesn't imply imperfection. Or they want to deny some, they want to deny their experience in, in a very big way by saying, Bela Khaif. Okay, Bela Khaif is like, I don't know the, the, what's it called? We consign, we don't know the how. Okay, we don't know the how. But we know the meaning. So when you say you know the meaning, you're saying we know it has to be something related to time that we know. It has to be something related to uh, space. It cannot be ultimately transcendent of that too. Because what do we think of, of God then? You see, this is where the tension is. And I think if you find yourself in this position, both sides, they have justification in what they are, think, what they are saying. It just depends on the temperament and the understanding of the person that will determine which one is going to choose. So if you meet some people, they will want God to be so intimate that they cannot affirm a kind of transcendent. It's too transcendent for them. They will not be able to conceive of God. They will not be able to think about God doing things and things like that. But the other camp, they see all these things as imperfection and they want to deny them for God while still affirming that God can do those things. So let's let's break it down. The classical theists will say God can do all the things you want God to do without being in time, without being in space or anything that is uh, within our own limitations. God is beyond that. And God still does those things that is said in the scripture. Okay. <laughs> the other side are saying God is in time somehow, is in space somehow. And anything that he says, he does them somehow, literally somehow. But those things don't, uh, don't imply, uh, it's not derogatory. It's not something that we should deny for God. This one is saying deny it for God and still God can do it. This one is saying affirm it for God. You don't need to deny it because it's not bad if you affirm it. That's what they're saying. So anyway, I will just build more on this. But this is where I think the playing field is. You're going to swing between both of them. And if you go too far on each, each of the spectrum, it can lead to problems. Like if you go too far in the classical tears, spectrum you can become a jahmi or you become a total 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 absolute transcendence that you have <laughs> that is too much and if you go too far on the opposite uh, open theism side you can become a real open tears that you will say things like god cannot do this god does not know something and you'll be saying things like that before you know it you become a process theologian and then you just go down from there anyway let me see what you guys think in the comment section see you guys later wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh